Time for operation number 746. That's right. Show number 746 for the Renegades of Puck. And at this moment in hockey history, the NHL regular season has come to its conclusion. The Nashville Predators have finished in fifth place. They have skated in 82 games. They finish with a record of 42, 32, and 8. 92 points has the Preds finishing the season 17 points behind the division champion Colorado Avalanche. On home ice, the Nashville Predators had a record of 22, 15, and 4. And on the road, the Nashville Predators had a record of 20, 17, and 4. They scored 229 goals in the season. They gave up 238 goals against that is good for a goal differential of minus nine throughout the regular season. Now, let's tell you the final standings for the Central Division. The Colorado Avalanche did win the division, as I just noted a second ago. 51 wins was the most in the Central Division. 109 points clears them of the Dallas Stars by one point to win the division. The Dallas Stars finished in second place with 108 points, but the Dallas Stars led in so many categories in the Central Division. Goals for 285 goals against 218 and goal differential plus 67 but because of 14 overtime losses the Dallas Stars find themselves falling one point short of the division title the Minnesota Wild finish in third place in the Central Division with 103 points the Winnipeg Jets with 95 the International Purs with 92 St. Louis Blues with 81 points on the season the Arizona Coyotes with 70 and the Chicago Blackhawks a very unimpressive set of numbers 59 points the least amount in the Central Division also the least amount of victories of of course with 26 but the least amount of home victories within the division 14 also the worst amount of goals for 200 and four goals for on the season, the least amount of goals scored. 301 goals against the only team in the Central Division. St. Louis also gave up 301. The only two teams in the Central to give up 300 goals on the season. Goal differential, though, minus 97, far and away. The worst in the Central Division. So that gets you all caught up on what happened in the Central Division with the final standings for the season now for the Nashville Predators. Let's turn to closing out their regular season. Let's start with the NHL ranks for the Preds over the course of the season. 2.72 is their goals for on the year. That was 28th out of 32 clubs in the NHL. That is not a very good number. 2.88 was their goals against on the season. That is 12th best in the NHL. Not bad. Finishing near the top third of the NHL in the shots for category. The Preds struggled all season long to generate shots on net and without Roman Yossi down the stretch of the season, it was dramatically worse. 29.5 shots on net for the season is 23rd in the NHL. And the shots against, again, the Preds gave up way too many shots. When we talk about UC Saros' final season stats, it will be reflective where he ranks amongst league leaders how much work he had to face this season. The Preds gave up 33.3 shots against per game on the season. That is 27th in the NHL. The Preds' power play was never very good this season. 17.6% was their conversion rate that is 27th rated in the NHL. 44 conversions on 250 opportunities. Now, the Predators' penalty kill absolutely surged the late portion of the season. 82.6% was their kill rate. 48 power play goals against on the season. The sixth best power play in the NHL this season. Not their best complete statistical metric in league rankings, but of the most important statistical metrics we talk about, sixth overall in PK, highly impressive stuff by the Nashville Predators. Dropping down to the next tier of statistics for the Preds of the season, face-off winning percentage. Didn't talk about it nearly enough this season. Eighth best in the NHL, 52.2%. Ryan Johansson, when healthy, was near the tops in the league individually. Penalty minutes for the Nashville Predators, 791 on the season. That was 10th over Overall in the league, minor penalties, 286, that was 12th. Major penalties, 29, that was 8th overall in the NHL. Now, here is the Nashville Predators' number one category that they led in the NHL in any statistics. They are the third highest rated team in the league in total hits for the season, 2,242. In block shots, Preds finished the season 6th overall in the NHL, 1,322 blocked Shots. So that's where the Nashville Predators finished in the standings and now where the Nashville Predators finished in the team rankings. Let's now spend a few minutes talking about the individual finishes to each season. We'll talk about the statistics for the team overall in points. 
and goals and assists. Then we'll talk about some of the breakdowns on some of the other categories, and we'll close this segment with the goaltenders talk. The captain, Roman Yossi, though he was unable to skate in the final games of the season, 18 goals and 41 assists for 59 points. 59 points leads the Nashville Predators this season, so this year the Predators cannot even get a 60-point scorer after so many massive record-breaking offensive seasons just a year ago. Those 41 assists would represent number one overall on the Nashville Predators in assists. Matt Duchesne, 22 goals, would represent the team lead for the season. He, of course, did not finish the season either due to injury. 22 goals and 34 assists for 56 points puts him in second place for the season. Tommy Novak finishes the season with 17 goals and 26 assists for 43 points in just 51 games skated. And Tommy Novak finishes third in scoring for the Nashville Predators this year. Tommy Novak is turning into a gem and he is signed into the future at one of the most affordable contracts at 43 points in 51 games can probably get a team. Philip Forsberg, 19 goals and 23 assists for 42 points, of course, was injured for quite some time here at the end of the season. Mikhail Granlin traded to Pittsburgh, 9 goals, 27 assists for 36 points. That's what he was able to do with the Nashville Bears. Glass, 14 goals, 21 assists for 35 points. Sissons, 12 and 18 for 30. Nino Niederreiter traded to Winnipeg, 18 and 10 for 28 points on the season so still able to put up 18 goals and finishes tied for third on the Nashville Predators in goals scored this season Ryan Johansson missed much of the end of the season due to injury 12 goals and 16 assists for 28 points was stellar in the face-off circle all season long Parson gets his first taste and opportunity at the NHL puts up six goals and 19 assists for 25 points injury slowed him down at the end of the season but he put up a highlight real goal that is maybe an all-timer for the franchise and now he will get every opportunity to go back to Milwaukee and participate in the AHL playoffs. Trennan finishes the year rather depressed when it comes to the offensive statistics. Only 12 goals and 12 assists for 24 points, but good to see Trennan maintaining the jam and playing hard each and every night. McDonough, 2-18 and for 20 points, and he really, truly is one of the best acquisitions this National Predators team has possibly ever had. Philip Tomasino at 5-13 and for 18. Ekholm traded Edmonton, but still put up 5-13 and for 18 for the Breds. Cole Smith, 4 goals, 13 assists for 17. Luke Evangelista, 7 goals and eight assists for 15 points in his first taste with the NHL and five and nine for 14 points was Tanner Janot before he got traded to Tampa Bay. Sherwood finishes the season with seven goals and six assists for 13 points. Jankowski seven goals, three of those shorthanded, five assists for 12 points and I added Luzon as the 20th and final scorer on this list as three goals, nine assists for 12 points. That takes care of the individual statistics by goals, assists, and points for the National Predators to wrap up the season. But a couple categories I wanted to branch out on and highlight. Penalty minutes for the season. Tanner Janot, even though traded to Tampa Bay and spent about a third of the season in Tampa Bay, 85 penalty minutes led the National Predators in the season. That was Tanner Janot. Luzon second on team with 66. Cole Smith with 60. Dante Fabro 50. And Yakov Trenin with 47. Now, this is a category that I particularly enjoyed looking up because I knew knew based on the number of hits Luzon was piling up game in and game out that he had to be really high up there for the season 250 hits on the regular season that led the Nashville Predators and was far far and away Tanner's you know at 213 Cole Smith at 198 Trenton at 167 and Sissons at 164 but a healthy Luzon next year could be near one of the league leaders in total hits. Block shots. Ryan McDonough, again, just the most fantastic addition to this Nashville Predators franchise in every way. Led the team in block shots in the end of the season with 165. The captain, Roman Yossi, with 148. Dante Fabro with 129. And no shocker here, time on ice for the season. Roman Yossi, 25-10 per game. Ekholm ended up being second on the team at 21-44. And McDonough, 21-32. Of course, no surprise that uh, it's all populated by defensemen when it comes to time on ice for the season. But Roman Yossi is truly uh, just a stellar player, and the National Predators, without him down the stretch, fell just shy of making it into the playoffs. With his leadership, with his offensive capabilities and his skill sets, who knows what the National Predators could have accomplished with the way this young group and core had played the stretch of the season out. UC Soros finishes the season with a record of 33-23-7. and seven. He has 7th best in the league in wins with 33. His 9-1-9 save percentage is 5th best in the NHL at the end of the season. 2.69 goals against average, 1,928 saves is 
first overall in the NHL. 2,099 shots against is first in the NHL. And 3,809 minutes and 59 seconds is also first in in the NHL. UC Saros may not have the goals against average. And he may not have the top save percentage in the NHL, but he kept his Nashville prayers in the race up until the dying periods of the season. And for that, and for the numbers that he leads in, in the NHL, I truly believe he should be a Vezina finalist this year. No, I do not believe he should win the Vezina. I do believe that there are goaltenders that are superior to him in most statistical categories and team results, of course, are going to play a factor into this. And GMs are always wowed by teams that finish near the tops of the standings. Anyway, I believe it's Olmark's Vezina to lose, but I believe UC Soros deserves, has earned, and has kicked the door in on becoming a Vezina finalist again this season. If he can get out of the gate hot next season, who knows? He could put up a season just like Linus Olmark has this year. Kevin Lankin in the back of goaltender for the Nashville Purs this year. Very respectable season. 9-8-1 and one overall on his record. 9-1-6 save percentage, 2.75 goals against average. He was put in there in some very difficult circumstances, especially early in the season, represented himself well and came away with some really big time performance. As a goaltender tandem, Saros Lankinen, very good going into next season with Askarov coming along in the pipeline in Milwaukee. The Nashville Predators are definitely set up and stacked nicely in that. That's got you caught up on the Central Division final standings where the Nashville Predators finished in the rankings amongst the league, the individual statistics, and all the different categories, plus the goaltenders. Man, it was fun covering this Nashville Predators team down the stretch run of the season. They almost made it into the playoffs, but more importantly than that, they were in it each and every night, they were competitive, and a lot of young players and a lot of future core players of this franchise were the ones that got the opportunities here down the stretch, and that was the most fun part of covering the team this season. It was a tough first half of the season, and it was honestly a very enjoyable and rewarding last part of the season, covering so many incredible young hockey players that were out there just bringing the jam and the no half step and effort, shift in and shift out. Impressive stuff from so many different players, and the next development camp that's coming up this summer is going to be the National Predators' most important camp that they have had since the first camp that they had 25 years ago. The franchise will look completely different next year other than Philip Forsberg, Roman Yossi, Matt Duchesne, Ryan Johansson, and of course, UC Saros. Other than that, this Nashville Predators team is going to repopulate the roster and the lineup with a wealth of options, and who knows what they will accomplish over the course of the summer, whether they trade some draft picks to bring in some other ready-to-go roster players, whether there are some other players still to sign in free agency, all of that to be tracked here on the show over the course of the season, but building around the core that I just mentioned with that defenseman, that goaltender, and those those couple of forwards and the youth movement coming in with the National Predators and Barry Trotz's first season. I cannot wait to see what this team is able to accomplish moving forward next season as they climb from fifth place, hopefully more into the playoff conversation sooner rather than later. I do believe these final games of the season allowed the Nashville Predators to absolutely shave off at least a season, if not more, in the rebuild process and how long it will take them to become competitive again. They can shrink that time frame even more by making a couple of very important trades and some signings here in the next one to two seasons. So that wraps up the regular season for the Nashville Predators. It's, man, it's heartbreaking to go back and have to talk about the last game recap of the season as we exit the Nashville Predators and mostly the NHL bubble and head back to the AHL with the Milwaukee Admirals. But it is our last game recap for the Nashville Predators of the season. It's game 82. It's Reverse Sports 4 game recap and it is coming up next hockey players are as unique as the game itself and your uniform should be tailored to fit you rebirth sports is your sports apparel tailor from shells bags warm-ups hats hoodies branding and more let rebirth sports be your custom hockey tailor and don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey rebirth sports on facebook twitter and instagram rebirth sport a match made in hockey